I never thought I would see the day. Today we're going over onto NHL Rank King's Twitter. Mason Black, he does the PNHL eScores and he has the app. It's a really good app. I use it all the time when it comes to looking at prospects and analyzing numbers and data regarding these prospects. I've shouted out NHL Rank King in the past. He's got a pretty good product, so I will definitely endorse the downloading of the app. I'm not sponsored, by the way. This is me coming from the heart here. Because what Mason ended up doing was he posted a Twitter thing. And I'm going to say Twitter, not X. We're going to keep this at Twitter here. We tweet about things. We don't X things. We quote tweet and subtweet and retweet. We don't X any of that. Sorry, Elon. I'm not abiding by whatever it is you're trying to do. But there was a really interesting Twitter post that Mason Black made asking a very simple question. Who would you rather have on your fantasy team? Then there's a little plug for the Fantasy Hockey Life podcast, wherein you'll have Victor Nuno and Jesse Severe talking about this. But the question that Mason is asking on Twitter is who would you rather have on your fantasy team? The two choices are Alex Turcott, who is a center, birthday 2001, February 26th, fifth overall by the Kings in 2019, who in the most recent season of play had 17 points in 31 AHL games and zero points in four NHL games, or... Would you rather have Vasily Podkolzin? Right wing, June 24th, 2001, the birth date, so just a tad younger than Turcotte. Also a 2019 first round pick, 10th overall by Vancouver. He had 7 points in 39 Vancouver Canucks games and 18 points in 28 Abbotsford Canucks games. Who would you rather have? Now the thing is, this is a question that I kind of love. Because 2019 was such a strong year for my channel when it comes to thinking about prospects, watching the prospects, analyzing them, and breaking down their differences. And to me, when I saw this immediate poll, I was like, okay, I'm going to vote for Turcotte. Like, if it's fantasy, I'm talking about points, we're talking about long term, I'm going to say Turcotte, because I feel in my heart of hearts that Turcotte still has more to give, and I still believe in the potential that we saw in him in 2019, so I went and voted for Turcotte. But as of right now, recording this audio... There's 323 votes on this post, and right now, I mean, Vasily Podkolzin is up 68% to Alex Turcotte's 32%. And I saw the results and I was like, damn, really? Wow, okay. Okay, that's a video topic, because my immediate instinct when I saw this was Turcotte. Yeah, I'd rather go Turcotte, I don't even need to think about it, because I think that Turcotte has so much potential... But afterwards, seeing this result, I was like, okay, yeah, let's break it down. So if we go back to 2019 and we think about both of these guys individually, Alex Turcotte was a guy who I had really high up on my 2019 board because in that 2018-19 season, sure, he was plagued with injuries. He didn't play most of the year. But Alex Turcotte had 62 points in only 37 NTDP games played. When he played, he was a gamer. He was the hardest working NTDP player out there with fantastic two-way capabilities and offensive pressure. Now, he was the second NTDP player taken after Jack Hughes. All the other guys... Zegras, Cam York, Spencer Knight, Boldy, all taken after Turcotte. He was supposed to be better, quote-unquote, than the rest of his NTDP teammates. Now, you can debate that that's really not the case anymore because of how good Caulfield and Zegras have turned out, but still. Alex Turcotte was one of these super incredible blends of offense and speed and two-way responsibility despite being a 5'11 center. And after he got drafted, you really started to see that manifest at higher levels of play. In the Wisconsin Badger system, he was a point per game as a freshman. With the Ontario Reign, he was under a point per game there. He was also a point per game guy at the World Juniors. But as his career went on, Alex Turcotte really started to get slowed down by two things. First were the injuries. He had suffered through some very bad hits to the head, and there was some concussion issues in there. It was so unfortunate, so unlucky, that we actually did make a few videos going over Turcotte and his misfortunes. Man, when you say it like that, that sucks. It sounds like we're capitalizing off of his misfortune, but nah, that's not really the point here. We're just talking about it, right? Turcotte had some really bad things going on with him, and as a result, this previous season, where he had 32 games in the AHL and 4 games in the NHL, I mean, 
I don't feel like this season is properly indicative of the talent level that he is capable of achieving, nor the growth that he has gone through either. Because when it comes to the LA Kings, I mean, you saw this already with Gabe Velarde. That guy had so many years of injuries that he needed to get over before he really became an NHL stud. And now in Winnipeg, he's hopefully going to carry over that point production and really prosper in that system. For Turcott, though, he was slowed down not only by these injuries, but also by the rest of the Kings, because this is a team that had a boatload of other centers. Everybody was projecting, hey, their center core is going to be stacked in the next few years. You've got Kopitar, who is probably not going to stick around forever. He's definitely in the last half of his career. Philippe Deneau is here. You've got Quinton Byfield, Alex Turcott, Gabe Velarde at the time. Now you have Pierre-Luc Dubois. So this center core is a really tough center core to crack. And as a result, there were many questions as to where the LA Kings would go with their centers, which players would be placed above other players, etc., etc. And so for Turcotte, there were so many obstacles that he had to go over, but it's not like Pod Colson didn't have his obstacles either. You see, Pod Colson at the time, in 2019, had such a strong Hlinka Gretzky tournament, he was at two points a game in that tournament, which is the tourney that put him on the map in the first place, and in that showcase, we saw the hard-working nature, we saw the scoring, we saw the shot, the bulldog-like mentality that Pud Colson brought to the Russian team. We all talked about this in the video a few days ago talking about Connor Bedard, but Pud Colson was in a position where he was a wrecking ball. And as his career went on, he had a few setbacks because he was played all over the place in different Russian leagues, different Russian junior teams, regular championship teams, and then he was placed in the KHL and the VHL. It was all over the place for Pod Colson. And it wasn't until his Vancouver stint where he really got significant development time with one team, and only one team. Eventually, last year, he had time split in the Vancouver and AHL system, so there was some more diversity, but... With Rick Tockett being in a position now where you're probably going to see Pod Colson get a bigger role next season, this entire idea of him maybe getting back to form like he had been with the Hlinka Gretzky a few years ago, it's all of a sudden a lot more plausible than it seemed to be back when he was up and down everywhere around and about bouncing through, what is that, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six different teams in his draft plus one season and multiple playoff runs. So for Pod Colson, he had his own setbacks as well, but I feel like when it comes to just absolute ceiling, I don't know, man. There's a part of me that still says that Turcott has it in him to do what it is that we all thought he would have been able to do and why he was drafted so high in the draft in the first place. He just had the really unfortunate turn of the coin where it was all just injuries slowing him down. Injuries and a stacked center core in front of him that limited opportunities and limited potential playing time. So when it comes to this debate here, if we're going fantasy keeper, I'm just saying long term, I would rather take Turcotte, but if anybody's going to go out there and say Pod Colson instead, hey, I totally get your argument, I totally get why this may be the year. If Rick Tockett puts Pod Colson in the best position to succeed, and the Vancouver Canucks are able to ship out at least one of their other wingers on the squad, then there could be a very good opportunity for Pod Colson to bounce forward, not even bounce back, but bounce up and bounce higher than where he has been in the past because his rookie season in the NHL wasn't bad. 26 points, 79 games, that's honestly pretty all right for a first year NHL player who was playing at 20 years old pretty much. So when it comes to Pod Colson heading into next season, if Rick Tockett's really able to give him that chance, then I'm looking forward to seeing what happens. But as for Alex Turcotte, you gotta remember this guy's also 22 years old, so there's still a lot of time for him to develop as well, and hopefully recover full-time from the injuries he had sustained the past few years. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Who would you rather have? Vasily Podkolzin or Alex Turcotte? Because just seeing social media's reaction and seeing that Podkolzin had taken a 2-1 to -one lead in this poll pretty much, it kind of blew my mind because I was like, damn, Pod Colson, Really? Like, if you told me that back in 2019, yeah, no, Pod Colson would have been the 2-1 to favorite pick over Alex Turcotte. I would have been excited. I would have been super stoked to see what Pod Colson would have been capable of doing. Because in my mind's eye, Alex Turcotte was going to be this, like, first-line center caliber guy. He could have gotten drafted third overall by Chicago because he's from that area. But, of course, we know they went with Doc instead. So, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about Pud Colson and Turcotte? Who would you rather have? What do you think about the analysis done on both of these guys? I know it's the second video we've made about Pud Colson this week, but... 
I thought this was too interesting not to go over. So let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishash Rolls 99. And bye.